Hi, I'm going to show you how to calculate states and energies for a thermodynamic process. And uh, my particular example is what's called an isothermal process. Isothermal means constant temperature. So uh, we need some data. So I'll go ahead and give you some numbers to play around with. And I'm going to give it to you in the form, most of it in the form of a PV diagram. So uh, PV diagrams are useful. Of course, there's other variables involved in, uh, in a thermodynamic process, but um, for, cert for uh, the purposes of determining work, it's nice to have a, have a PV diagram because you can get the work graphically. So we have pressure uh, on the vertical axis, pressure in SI units of Pascals, and then we have volume in SI units of cubic meters. Okay, let's just say that our thermodynamic process, our isothermal process, starts with a volume of 0 0.006 cubic meters and a pressure of 1 times 10 to the fifth pascals. That's about an, about an atmosphere. Okay, um, So we're going to compress this gas isothermally to half its volume. So uh, we're not going to talk about the details of how that, how that happens, but um, let's say that we compress the gas down to 0 0.003 cubic meters. Okay? Um, so in an isothermal process, thinking about the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, so we're assuming that this gas obeys the ideal gas law, uh, the product pressure times volume has to remain the same because NRT is all staying the same. So it's uh, isothermal process is by definition constant temperature, R is the ideal gas constant, and then we typically assume the number of moles is constant because we have a sealed container. So the, uh, but the volume gets cut in half, so the pressure has to double. So we could do some algebra and do, uh, calculate it, um, but I don't think that's necessary. You know that if we cut the volume in half for an isothermal process, we're gonna double the pressure. So we end up with about two atmospheres, or 200,000 pascals. So we end up right here, and it's tempting to draw a straight line between those, but that wouldn't be right. If we want the product pressure times volume to remain constant, it has to be a curve. And the, actually the mathematical term would be a hyperbola. Okay, So something like that, and you draw an arrow to show the direction. So we're uh, doing the ice thermal compression, we're raising the uh, cutting the volume in half, doubling the pressure. Okay, give me, give me make up some more data here. So we'll just assume that this temperature uh, that which this occurs is 350 Kelvin. So uh, we know that. Uh, we now know, we knew the two of the volumes, one of the pressures, we figured out what one of the pressures was. Um, and it's nice to calculate all the states first before going on to, to calculating all the energies for, uh, for these processes. So that's, that's typically the goal, is to calculate heat work and change in thermal energy. But you want to start by thinking about the states first. That's always a good, uh, good thing. Even if you're not explicitly asked to solve for those things, you usually need to know those things in order to make proper calculations of energies. Okay, so um, what I need to do here is solve, <coughs> solve this for the number of moles, because we don't know that. So number of moles would be pressure times volume over ideal gas constant times the temperature. And uh, we can use either the beginning or the end. It doesn't matter. Um, let's just use the beginning. So the beginning pressure is 1 times 10 to the fifth. We have an initial volume of 0 0.006. We have an ideal gas constant of 8.31 in SI units. I'm leaving them off, but I'm everything's SI, so I'll end up with SI units of moles. So N is going to equal 0 0.206 moles. Okay, so I've got initial pressure, volume, temperature. I know the moles. I know final uh, pressure, volume, and temperature. I'm good to go. I've described this, the states, beginning and end completely. And I also know that it's an isothermal process, so I can calculate the energies now. And you could, we can do this in any order we want. Um, so let's start with, with the easy one. So change in thermal energy is actually very easy for, a, uh, for an isothermal process. So um, think about what's happening at the molecular level. Temperature relates to 
the motion of the molecules. Okay? And so if we're not changing the temperature, we're not really changing the motions of the molecules. They're bumping more often into the walls of the container because we shrunk the container, but the molecules aren't moving faster. The temperature hasn't, um, hasn't, hasn't increased. So the thermal energy remains the same. Okay, so change in thermal energy equals zero. And you could show this explicitly with a calculation, but why bother? We can just assert that it's zero because the temperature didn't change. Okay, and then the, the next uh, ones we could calculate uh, in, in either order. I would typically start with a work calculation. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, so the work would be the area under this curve. Tip, um, so, but that's hard to do graphically. I mean, if it's straight lines and you can use geometry to calculate that area, but uh, because it's a curve, it's a calculus problem. But don't worry, you don't have to do any calculus. Somebody has done the calculus for you already. And that formula looks like this. And I'm using the sign convention where positive work is work being done on the gas. Okay, so the positive work will be, be a compression. So we should expect to end up with a uh, positive number. And it looks the formula looks like this, minus the number of moles, ideal gas constant, temperature, times the natural log of the volume ratio for that process. Okay. So just a matter of chucking numbers into this, um, this uh, formula. Again, this thing corresponds to the area uh, under this curve here. So um, throw in numbers, so 0 .006, 8.31 for the ideal gas constant, 350. And let's just do a natural log of a half because our final volume is one half our initial volume. So we can just make this a little easier, natural log of a half. And so we do end up with the right sign because we, we're taking natural log of something less than one, and so that cancels out this minus sign. We do get positive work for the compression as expected. And you throw those numbers in your calculator, and it will spit out 416 joules. Okay. So uh, last thing is to calculate the heat. So we can use the uh, first law of thermodynamics. So typically when you're doing these types of problems or calculating energies for processes, you have to do two calculations kind of independently. Sometimes you might get lucky and get a zero. And then the third one, once you've got two out of the three, you use the, uh, the first law of thermodynamics. So we have this, that change in thermal energy equals Q plus W. And you could probably do this, do this one in, in your head, right? Because uh, we have a zero change in thermal energy. So the heat and the work have to be the opposite. So I'm just gonna forego the algebra and simply make an assertion that heat has to be 416 joules, okay? So basically what happens in this isothermal compression, the external world smashes this gas, makes it smaller, gives it 416 joules of energy. Simultaneously, that gas gives out 416 joules of energy, and in total, it gains uh, no energy at all, okay? All right, so that's, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.